discuss our Vision Zero program outline. Uh, let's do a roll call. I will start. Joan Kepner. Aaron Rodriguez, City Council. Marsha Martin, City Council. Kevin Waters, City Council. Toby Waltz, uh, Transportation Planning Manager. Jim Nixnet, Director of Engineering Services. Harold Lane, City Manager. Susie Adelma Faring, City Council. Shakiri Yarbrough, City Council. Glenn Benny Wayne, Planning Director. Johnny Marsh, City Manager's Office. Director of Transportation Planning. Kevin Lane, Council Development Board. Eugene May, City Attorney. Becky Doyle, Staff. Taylor Wickman, Staff. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were on. I thought you were. I thought you were a presenter. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm just here to enjoy. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Zach Hart, Public Safety. And Jeff Satter, Police. Okay, great. So I'm going to turn this over to uh, Jim Anderson. Good evening. Good evening. Director uh, of the Council Members, uh, staff, and guests. Um, uh, tonight we, we have some information we, we want to present on a Vision Zero overview. Um, this information primarily is taken from what is the Vision Zero network, which is the uh, main um, kind of uh, information place for Vision Zero programs. Um, so um, to put this kind of in, in context when we talk about Vision Zero, uh, Vision Zero is a strategy to eliminate all traffic fatalities and severe injuries while increasing safe, healthy, safe, healthy, and equitable mobility for all. Um, to kind of add that context when we talk about the city of Long Island, um, we have had, we have averaged um, basically for the last five years about 6.3 fatalities uh, per year. Um, from a low in 2016 of two fatalities, to a high in, in 2019 of 12. Uh, now those could be um, spread out through the city on local city streets as well as CDOT programs. Um, next month, uh, we will be presenting the, um, our 20, uh, 2017 to 2021 crash report, which will have a significant amount of data regarding the number of accidents in the city, uh, as well as the, the new number for fatality. So we do anticipate uh, that the, the average fatality will go up uh, simply because of the five year, uh, the two year number I just mentioned earlier was in 2016. That will drop off last year uh, in 2021. I believe there were seven fatalities as well. So, um, just some context um, Vision Zero presents itself as an alternative to the status quo that treats traffic related deaths as inevitable. Um, we have a chart from Vision Zero Network that shows kind of the traditional approach that has the traffic engineers historically kind of followed in designing stuff and, and kind of the philosophy they followed. Vision Zero notes that traffic deaths are preventable. Uh, the integrate human failing in the approach, uh, prevent uh, fatal and severe crashes, it takes a systems approach, and, that, and they also are saving, saving lives is not expensive. Okay, thanks. That's good. Okay, so the components of a Vision Zero commitment. Um, I'm not going to read these uh, listings because we're going to go into each one of these in a little more detail uh, as we move through. Um, but there are nine major components um, that the program kind of pushes out. Uh, a political commitment. Um, high striking local officials make an official and public commitment to Vision Zero goal to achieve zero traffic fatalities and severe injuries among all road users. That is the start. And then, specifically at the end, within a, a set time frame. Uh, other communities have set 2030, 2045 as, as a date. You know, it just depends on the program uh, for what they establish. Uh, Multidisciplinary leadership. Um, I, I can't emphasize it enough that this has to be um, all leaders in the city have to take this on. This is not just going to be an engineering, traffic engineering effort. This has got to be an effort um, through a task force uh, with, with representatives from city council, um, public safety, planning, public works, community services, school district. Um, we didn't list TAP, but we asked them at last night's meeting to indicate that they should be part of that as well on mm -hmm. our, our transportation project. 
an action plan. Um, really, once it's it, it's adopted, the next step would be an action plan. Uh, that would be created within one year of the initial commitment that implements clear strategies, the owners of those strategies, interim targets, timelines, and performance measures. Um, equity. Um, city stakeholders commit to both an equitable approach to Vision Zero by establishing inclusive and representative processes as well as equitable outcomes by ensuring measurable benchmarks to provide that safe transportation options for all road users in all parts of the city. Cooperation and collaboration. Uh, commitment is made to encourage meaningful cooperation and collaboration among relevant, relevant government agencies and community stakeholders. To establish a frame, framework for multiple stakeholders to set shared goals and focus on coordination and accountability. That's the biggest thing in Vision Zero is you have to have an accountability piece. Systems-based approach. City leaders commit to and prioritize a system-based approach Division Zero focusing on the built environment, systems, and policies that influence behavior, as well as adopting myth messaging that emphasizes that these traffic losses are preventable. Um, the, the hardest thing that we do in, in traffic engineering, one of the things I think public safety may do with as well, is, is changing behavior. Okay? People love to speed. It's a behavioral issue. You can't always build your way around it. Um, but we've, uh, Vision Zero will, will help us give some guidelines for that. Data-driven, city stakeholders commit to gather, analyze, utilize, and share reliable data to understand traffic safety issues and prioritize resources based on evidence of the greatest needs and impact. Uh, I pointed out earlier the crash report. We do collect a significant amount of data. Um, we probably, you know, would, for Vision Zero, need to collect more, uh, but also share that data. With, with all users of the road. One of the, I think our, our failings in, in my engineering team is that we collect the data, we post it maybe to the website, but we don't and we utilize that data, but it's not necessarily put out and shared in a citywide message enough. Community engagement. Opportunities are created to invite meaningful community engagement, such as select, select community representation on the task force, broader community input, through public meetings or workshops, online surveys, and other feedback. Another key piece, community engagement. It will fail without having the community involved as well as, as, as getting their input. Transparency. The city's process is transparent to city stakeholders and the community, including regular updates on the progress of the action plan, performance measure, and a yearly report to city council. Those are the components of the Vision Zero commitment. Um, some other strategies. Uh, that are pulled from, the, from those components, leadership, collaboration, and accountability, prioritizing community engagement and equity, setting a timeline to achieve zero traffic deaths, collecting, analyzing, and using the data, roadway design, and growing from that data that prioritizes safety. Uh, one of the biggest components of Vision Zero is managing speed. Uh, there's data, um, didn't bring any tonight, but they, they, that have read studies where um, the difference in surviving an accident is significant if, if speeds are at 30 miles per hour, 35 versus a 45. In, in terms of some of the management of speeds, uh, some of the elements of the Vision Zero commitment would be um, you'd be looking for looking red light cameras, speed cameras. Uh, license plate reader, traffic enforcement tools, um, and traffic enforcement in general. So what will it take? Three simple items. It's going to take resources, it's going to take some funding, and it's going to take time. Uh, we're not going to turn it around in a year. It's going to take a number of years from that commitment, okay, after after we produce an action plan for, for results to, to, to really to get to that goal of zero deaths. So how would we propose to start taking it on? Next steps? Let me talk a little bit about next steps for everyone because we're kind of in the midst of doing a lot of different things with planning and those different elements that really do affect patients today. So we're very we're excited about what's happening and what's coming to so The first piece of this is really the transportation mobility plan. This is the portion of the envisioned Walmart 
plan that talks specifically to transportation. So in the first quarter of next year, we really, we've got money available and we'd like to start moving forward with the idea of uh, updating that plan. It's been a number of years, 2016, since it's been done, so it's time for this to move forward. With that plan, with, with whatever was going to happen with Vision Zero, we were still going to bring Vision Zero part of this plan because it just made sense and we wanted to bring it in front of you and ask uh, for kind of your direction on that as well. So that is something that's moving forward first quarter. We're going to uh, you know, start to put together some scoping elements of that um, to really talk about, uh, and we'll talk about this a little later in the presentation about how we're kind of changing the narrative and more of the future of transportation piece that we've been talking about for a number of years now. So um, we're swapping it up. We're, we're, we're kind of changing the, the uh, discussions of the number one issue is safety. So Vision Zero fits really well into that. As, uh, and, it, and it can be part of the TMP process and it can be part of that implementation piece that we talked about. So those, those are all things that can happen and what are going to happen in the next year regardless. So. We feel like we're on a good track, but we certainly want to hear from you about some of this as well. And then the TAB recommendation, we actually went to took the same presentation to the Transportation Advisory Board last night, and they came back and said, um, we would really like to uh, make sure or recommend to council that they, and they, and they knew we weren't taking direct action tonight, but they knew that we might want to hear what they have to say. So they did talk about, let's develop the plan needed to implement Vision Zero. Uh, return to TAB and Council with the full development plan eventually to begin and, and the budget for all that implementation pieces. Vision Zero basically beginning in 2024 is when that's going to have to really start moving based on the TMP that needs to happen in 2023. And we just assume that that element of Vision Zero is part of that with, with your direction, of course. So we don't want to presume anything, but, um, but that's part of, kind of the TMP piece as well. Uh, they, they did say, and they, they want the TMP to enthusiastically endorse, and that, that was a direct quote, uh, endorse Vision Zero as part of the planning efforts. So that was, they really do want the TMP to take on a lot of the Vision Zero piece, and I talked a little bit about why that's so important. Um, I don't want to say closing thoughts, but closing from us, thoughts <laughs> from your staff, uh, this, this part of it. Is that Vision Zero really started in, in Scandinavian countries, and they have a commitment to many modes and moving people by very, very many and different modes. Um, educating the public and uh, really consistent traffic law enforcement throughout the country, which is a national policy. So what we're saying is we're a Western United States city. Uh, a lot of Western United States cities, a lot of United States cities have to take, or North American cities, I should say, have tried to take on Vision Zero without all those elements in place. So you can't just drop a Vision Zero plan down and be the only thing that you do. It can't just be one element. It needs to incorporate all these various elements of what Jim brought up before, is really the education piece, the enforcement piece, being on board with the police department, with our community services folks, with our uh, comms team, with engineering, with planning. It, it's gonna, that's gonna take all of us to make this work uh, well, and so, we can just do Vision Zero, we can go through the steps and do this, but you've seen it not work in other cities that have tried to just, let's just, you know, let's just check that box of, of doing Vision Zero and doing a really good plan, but without all the other elements, it's not, we don't think it's gonna work. And, that, and it's just proven out. It doesn't seem to work unless, and this, the one thing we didn't mention and I didn't mention was community. It takes community buy-in for this whole thing to work too. So we need to get the education piece out there, but we need feedback, a feedback loop of, you know, is this appropriate, is this working for folks, do people, are, is there buy-in to it as well? So a lot of things going on. As you can tell by just the way we kind of laid it out, it's gonna take a long time. And so we are asking in the next section, we do talk about how patience please in the results, because this, this is gonna take a lot of effort. The safety, as Jim mentioned as well, there's a speed factor piece of that. There's, but that's also, there's a vulnerable population factor with that too. So how do we build better facilities for the vulnerable populations, such as people who walk, people who bicycle, people who are waiting for transit? And transit has to be a better 
and service as well. We can't live with what is currently out there for transit. So we need to take that next step and the TMP will help us do that, take that next step on other transit opportunities. And there's a few folks that have been listening to um, some of the things we've been sharing about. Um, there's other possibilities for really robust transit in, in long run. It's gonna take, again, time, resources, and, and money. So, um, uh, we really just pushing for that all modes have to be safe, comfortable, and reliable to make this all work. Uh, obviously, driving is fairly, it's fairly safe, very reliable, and very, very comfortable. So we've got that one covered, we think. And it's really talking about being a pedestrian in this town, walking in this town, do you feel safe? Do you, do you have a reliable trip that you can count on, you know, the, the infrastructure being there for you? And is it fairly comfortable? Uh, really comfortable experience of the feel. You know, it doesn't feel out of place in some places in the um, Same thing with bicycle window. Same thing with trying to ride a bus. Do we give people comfortable places to wait for a, a city bus? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. So those are all things that we need to uh, look at. And that really builds toward that transportation mobility plan that we want to move forward and the future of transportation. I think that's just part of, the, of that as well. And part of the scoping that we'd like to do for the transportation master plan is really flip the current um, 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 ideology and, and uh, paradigm where we really talk about how fast and how quickly can we move traffic through it's really about, you know, it's all been a discussion about level of service for traffic and, 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 and 85th percentile speeds and those kind of things. We, we've really done a great job of moving traffic. And so it's time to it's time about this transportation mobility plan to kind of flip that into and talk about uh, our most vulnerable users on top, and that's what we're looking out for first, the safety of our most vulnerable users, which is typically typically those pedestrians and transit riders, bicyclists, um, and then we get to you know, the single occupant vehicle as kind of that last place in the list maybe in, the, in, in, <laughs> in this new idea. We'll certainly <laughs> float that by. That's just writing out the scope and getting things kind of moving down that path. We'll need buy-in from everyone at this table. We'll need buy-in from our transportation advisory board. And then again, back out to the community and the different folks that are part of the city to make sure we're on the right track there. But I think we do want to flip the narrative and that's kind of what we're aiming for. So with that, if you have any questions, we really like to hear from you at this point in any kind of direction you want to apply. If you want to hear too. Um, can one thing that I didn't hear as much as I would have hoped is, and maybe at the end of the planning that we will hear more of this, but community is a big organization with a lot of different collections of people and stakeholders in it. And I think the earlier the better that our communications organization would come out with essentially uh, contracts, um, not in the sense of I'm gonna sue you if you don't do this or that, but uh, you know, an understanding that I as the school system, I as a transit provider, I as a, a property manager, am committed to certain ways of doing my job that are um, supportive of enabling of Vision Zero. Um, because I, you know, I, I mean, I can see lots of ad campaigns coming out of that, you know. I'm for the safety of our children, I'm for um, the, the safety of our elders um, that uh, would, would essentially uh, get people moving on the idea and get the community behind the idea as early as possible. And I'm not a good person to, to think about what those little actions might be you know, I mean, the LHA makes sure there's never any ice on the sidewalks, you know, that kind of stuff. But, um, but the people who do those individual jobs should be pretty good at figuring out what those things are. Any other comments? No. 
got some questions. Yeah, no questions. Go ahead. <coughs> so the school district was one of the entities listed in that first slide. Have we had any conversation with the school district? I, I don't see anybody in the school district here. So is there is there a dialogue occurring in the school district? But <laughs> that would be part of the TFP process would be to include them as a major player. So we haven't had we haven't opened that conversation. We do have ongoing meetings with them, but I don't think it's the only to the level of this. Um, you mentioned success in Scandinavian countries, uh, less so in the U.S. Are there any U.S. examples? <clears throat> You would point to municipality X, Y, or Z as examples of a systems approach or a systems based approach. Uh, the kind of data they're collecting, how they're collecting it, how they're using it, that we would we would think of as if not best practice, exemplary in the practices associated with or required uh, if you're gonna be if you're gonna seriously eliminate uh, serious injuries or, or deaths of pedestrians or motorists. The, the, the best example I would come up with is City Builder. They have adopted Vision Zero a couple of years ago. They have lowered um, the, some of the data, lowered some of their, their fatalities. Um, they are actually, their average is about 2.4 fatalities in the last five years. Um, on the other, other scale, on the other side of that, uh, the City of Denver, who after they've adopted Vision Zero, their, their accidents have actually increased. So, uh, just to make a comparison. Drawing information, Boulder would be a, a pretty good place to start where they've had some success in adopting the program and then uh, undertaking you know, a number of uh, action plan or a number of plans to, to reduce things. So, uh, well, that's, is that it? I think. If I can jump on this. Well, there's. there's yeah. Well, there's a new mention in this. The Vision Zero Network has a, a national map of uh, probably up to 20 uh, U.S. cities that have adopted it. Whether they see success or not, I haven't really dealt with it. I think part of what we've talked about is if you look at transportation systems and you're going east coast to west coast and, and the impact of the car culture and what it looks like. And, and some of those city in, in the cities that are more densely populated have more robust transit, more including bus, some version of rail. A stronger walking culture and those things they do tend to do better just because they already have things functionally in place to the point of what you see in Europe that's sort of the culture that already exists and you can almost look as you're moving east to west the further you get to the west it's a different issue because it's a different culture within the community and I think that's the part of the community approach in terms of that car culture and the natural inclination to speed and those types of things because it's, it, our communities weren't built in the way that those other communities were built and, and i think that's the time piece that they're talking about is you know why is boulder done well i mean when you drive in boulder it's more congested it you know you're not able to move at the speeds that you move in a less congested street so that's lowering the speeds which is addressing all of those issues versus in other communities where the roads are wider and people tend to drive faster, it's all of that. Could, uh, just, just, a, just a reflection. Um, I appreciate the fact that Boulder is, you know, doing this and doing well. If there's one mantra we hear over and over and over again, <coughs> is don't turn us into Boulder. Right. So it would be nice to have another example or two, other than Boulder. I'm just saying, and I'm not saying we're good looking for Boulder or learn from Boulder. If that's it, that, that it'll be a more difficult road here, or a road to plow, than if we had this just, you know, just a couple of reaction. Uh, two more questions. What does accountability look like? Because you, it was mentioned in the comment. Mm -hmm. What does this look like in this context? Yeah. Yeah. Who's accountable for what, how would we know, and so on? I think we, we lay that out in the action plan and lay the goals we would be trying to meet. And then the accountability piece would be, as, as we report on a yearly basis, uh, success or failures. And if we're failing, what changes we make to, to get back on track? 
there's also a reporting feature that TAB has asked that we report to them once a quarter and we would report to council at least once every year to talk about where we're at and where and that is kind of the only piece of the So um, what would be what would be encouraging to me at least to hear um, in, embedded or derived from Vision Zero are, is this set of standards for, for whatever, for, I don't know, like those violations or those accidents. But in my mind, it's, it's accountability always start, it's accountability starts with clarity on what's the standard of performance, right, that you aspire. How are you going to know where you've met that? And what are you going to do when you don't, right? You're going to do high fives when you do. The, 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 uh, <coughs> The answer to the third question in my mind would be what's the kind of virtuous cycle you get into, right? And how are you going to learn and what are you going to do that? How are you going to consolidate the learning and, and what's the plans for improvement going forward? I, I'm just saying, absent standards, and there are that there are probably some here. Um, I don't, you know, accountability can look a lot of different ways. It just seems to me that that's, in my mind, what this ought to look like when we talk about standards, we're going to clear accountability. We're going to be clear on standards for in these areas. Boom, 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 boom. Here's the optimal performance we're after. And, and we're going to collect data on these cycles, right, to make certain we're meeting our standards. And if we don't, we're going to learn quick, we're going to learn fast, and we're going to embed what we learned into you know, some improvements. My last question would be <clears throat> two refer there's references to public engagement and education. Um, what should be the role of elected officials? In both public engagement, what does that look like? What's our role in the public engagement process and in the public education process? No, it's going to be critical. I, mean, I know it's need, critical. We're need what is? Council. What are we doing? What are we doing different? If it's same old, same old, well, then I'm wondering what are we doing here? Yeah, that might be that vision zero plan, that, that action plan that really needs to be very specific about where we need the <coughs> team leaders to be inserted in the process and how they give and sell the message that we put it in the community. So then it's going to be, I can't answer the question exactly, but I, I just think that actually that is critical as far as how that lays out your role as a leader. Well, I think those are questions that come yeah. out of the TMP mm -hmm. and the plan as we're right. building it. Mm -hmm. um, we, we will outline all of those issues in the plan in terms of who has what role, who does what. We haven't started on that because we don't have direction from council to start on Vision Zero. And so once we start on it, those will all be components of the plan that we will outline and outline what we want you all to do, similar to when we did the um, uh, composting. There was components in there where council members were part of the advertising campaign and and putting out messages and so that will all start folding in with the plan as it's created you know right now we're here to talk about here's what vision zero is do you all want us to proceed in, in the TMD we will line all of those areas out okay um, it's a safe is it safe to assume that that for us to be successful for any municipality to be successful um, there's a different set of behaviors or responsibilities for elected officials. Or we just, is it, we just show up on Tuesdays, we go through our agendas and hope for the best. Can I, um, can I make a comment to that? Sure. I think, uh, to your point, I think what I've always wanted is that council, as a group, discusses what it is they want to do and what they are capable of doing. And I think that might be as after the TMP comes out for us as a council, as a group, to sit down and say, how can we carry this message forward? Rather than having, because we know what the TMP will be, we'll know what the message is, what would we feel comfortable doing and how can we do it? Because we're all, we're all different. Yeah. And I think those discussions from us together would be helpful. I, I don't mean to be argumentative, but I do think, I think it should be a robust discussion. Um, uh, but I, but I, if, it's, if, we're not, if we're doing nothing differently, 
or we're only doing what we're comfortable with doing, um, then that would explain why a lot of municipalities have not done very well at this, right? Because people fall into the same patterns of behavior without clarity and expectations of what's going to be different for them. And, and I'm, I'm down with Vision Zero a lot. Not, not knowing what the expectation is. But the expectation may be that we abandon one council meeting a month and do public forums on Vision Zero and invite the public. It may be that we abandon meetings in the council and change the charter so we can we can go on the road and meet all over town. It may be, I don't, you know, it may be a lot of things that we have, we host meetings in our wards or not knowing those things, <clears throat> I'm up for all of them, but not knowing those things and then being confronted later with, well, this is what it's going to mean if, in, if it's only something I'm comfortable with, I get a chance well, to take a step backwards on this. And I think if I can add to that, it's on, on the typical council meeting, it, you know, when we look at this, they say resources. It is adjusting our budget process to make sure that we can adequately fund what we want to do. So we talked about red light cameras and, yep. and speed cameras. Let me just make a point right there. I saw resources, funding, and time. Uh -huh. uh, if, I were to, if I were to put resources, I would put funding and time as bullets under resources because those are two of the most valuable resources. The other huge resource are the people in this room. Correct. And how do we utilize the people in the best part of the and, 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 and I think that, and I think the answer is, and, and it's, if you look at it from a traditional sense, it's reshaping how we look at budgets and how we look at funding. And you know, maybe we need to, you know, the cameras are five thousand dollars a month per camera, per red light cameras, per pole. Correct, Zeph. Yeah, Fifty five hundred dollars per camera. So if you cover an entire intersection, you need four of those. So you're looking at the map is about forty thousand dollars a month. For one set of red light cameras in an intersection. So again, you if you if, so you're looking at um, I think it's uh, four hundred eighty thousand dollars a year, and they want a five year contract. So that's just for one intersection. I do. So, so four hundred eighty thousand dollars per intersection. Per intersection, if you want to get all all the lanes coming in the these and 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 I think so to talk through this to go if we're going to embrace this and we're going to do that. People will come to us and go, everything that we've heard when this came up before, you know, Big Brother shouldn't be doing this. And, and if we're going to em embrace the concept of, of Vision Zero, we've got to know, we've got to do certain things and, and really withstand that storm to know this is part of that solution or speed cameras because we can't put officers at every intersection. We can't have them in every neighborhood, and so we need to be able to utilize these resources so that it could really be a force multiplier for us so that we can hit those goals of lowering the speed limit, fewer fatalities. So it's going to take that kind of piece, um, and that's where we really need support. Um, if you remember when we redid Mount Brook, Mountain View, I mean, we got a lot of pushback. About that, and when we read you, or Mountain View Avenue, when we described it, and, yeah. and and things like that. So it's if we're going to make that run of this, when we get into those situations, you know, we need support. Or if we need to change design standards on streets, where we go, we don't need them as wide as we normally had them. We need them more narrow, which will cause you know cars to back up and. We'll talk about congestion. We need to be deliberate and constantly referring to Vision Zero, and that's really where the electives come in, mm -hmm. is to be there in this and, and be champions. You know, at the end of the day, it's how are we a champion on this? And, and we will line all of these components out, but at a high level, it's very specific into how we make funding decisions mm -hmm. to as broad as how do how you all become champions. And when we're dealing with these issues, you know be there because I've seen cities that have done things like this and when it got a little too hot because somebody needed a curb cut for a business or somebody needed this they lost focus on it and we ended up moving or they those cities ended up moving away from what they were trying to achieve. Any other questions? 
So can you just, um, I just want to make sure I have a clear understanding that a plan will be created and we know that there are other departments within the city that we know public safety, we know communications, we know these departments will be involved in this plan. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. And so you said that from what I read and from what I remember is that this plan could take up to a year. Is that correct? Yeah. And so from us, you just need us to say we are all for this plan. For you to create this plan, get it going, and in the meantime, you will inform us as you are progressing with the plan. I'm yes, the idea, the idea is that the, we were, we're asking for direction tonight on the vision zero element of the transportation mobility plan. We want to do the transportation mobility plan regardless. I think a big component of that plan is the vision zero, so we're asking uh, for your direction <coughs> on whether we should uh, formally adopt a vision zero stance for the city of Ottawa because we will need to come back to, to you if, if you say yes. We need to come back to you and probably we've talked about this probably a resolution that basically states that we're planning to become a vision zero city and here's the steps we're going to take. So I, I think it's a good idea and I actually feel that Vision Zero, when it's communicated to the public, will be the backing for some of the changes we want to make in the city. We'll explain why we're doing this. Um, because there are too many, too many changes that are made in all areas, but especially in transportation, where people don't understand why we're doing that. So if we make Vision Zero the headline of everything we're doing in transportation, I think it would be easier to sell uh, bikeways, changing streets, crosswalks, lack of them, everything. If we just always push the Vision Zero. So I think it should definitely be part of the uh, transportation master plan. But I also think that we need to be clear as to what Vision Zero is to our community. Right. That's key. Right. You know, because I think we're gonna we don't want to confuse everyone. What's the difference, right? And so I just think we need to make sure we have a clear um, description as to what that is before we go out saying vision zero, vision zero. I, I agree with you, uh, counselor, because some of the pushback's going to be shouldn't we shouldn't we always try not to have deaths? Why do we need a plan? So um, I think that's a good point. All right, thank you. Um, so first of all, my question wasn't brought up here and I know that it's been spoken about a little bit before is possible funding that's related to Vision Zero, either from the state or federal levels. Do you know anything about that funding channel? Well, there is through Dr. Cog. Sorry Dr. to interrupt Cog. you, but yeah, there is through Dr. Cog grants uh, because they have a huge vision zero for the state to adopt, and um, they are looking for grants both on state and federal level. But we don't know exactly what those well, amounts are. Yeah, no. what we missed out was yeah. In September, there was a deadline for vision zero planning efforts of the action plan, mm -hmm. and so that was up to a million dollars for that level of effort. And if you had that, you could move into the next tranche of funding, which was up to $30 million for implementation of Vision Zero Plan. And that was, again, this year, so I don't know what it's going to look like for next year. But that gives you kind of a scalability, I think, of you know how much you need to do the action plan. And certainly, if the action plan is something that comes out of transportation mobility plan, you would chase those dollars. Or even if it was part of something that you wanted to Immediately, we go after those dollars in the next possible chance that we could. So, there's the possibility there of recouping some of the expenditures, you know, as far as implementation, implementation of automated enforcement, for instance, uh, you know, like cannabis and license plate reasons. Um, through that, that if, you action, if you have the action plan, if I can, there, there's two components to this on the funding. 
one component is grants to do the work. The other component is in transportation dollars and grants that aren't specific to this. We are seeing, I think the state said, they want to see Vision Zero program. So mm -hmm. is that correct? So it's two funding sources, correct, Phil? State, yes. The state has a funding source for some of that as well. But in terms of just normal grants, they want to city, see cities move into this for other transportation grants, right. is that correct? So it's starting to become an, a requirement for other dollars as well. Okay. And so then also in, in kind of the revenue concept uh, that we had to go and segue a little bit is, considering cameras and things, is there kind of projected revenue per intersection per you know, traffic count that goes through that intersection of traffic flow as far as citation revenue is concerned? Yeah, so let me, let me correct that, but I apologize. I gave you the wrong numbers. It's about $22,000 per month per intersection. Uh, it's about $264,000 a year per intersection, uh, and about $1.3 million if you, you have to do it in five years. So again, you can limit the number. What we look at early on, and what we've seen uh, just in some conversations with Boulder and some other areas, uh, you'll tend to see a higher number at the beginning because people are getting used to it, and then you can see that number decrease. But again, it can fluctuate. So when you're talking about revenue, it's very limited because the state puts a marker of I think it's seventy-five dollars per violation. So you can't go over that number. So it's typically different than an officer observes and pulls you over and writes you a ticket. There's a different fine amount, but the state has set a standard rate of seventy-five dollars for violating that because it's going to look at the civil penalty versus a you know, municipal criminal. And so you would have to figure out, basically, to cover your cost, to buy $22,000 to try to figure out revenue that you need to check in. All right, and I can do that for you. Well, I, either way, the point I was getting at is there's obviously some sort of revenue streams, be it grant funding, uh, be it citation revenue, that will offset some of these costs, right? And the one I'm most concerned with, though, really, is the enrichment of our intra-city public transportation system um, compared to what we have now. As I think that is a very pivotal and key portion of uh, a Vision Zero community. And so that's the one that I think would take a lot longer to implement than, say, adding cameras and that kind of stuff, uh, lowering speed limits, and depending on you know, that, how the whole plan goes. And so uh, just wondering, you said that there's broad work being done on it, and I know I've had this conversation with you before, and uh, basically your answer to me was, it's going to take a lot of different partners and stakeholders <coughs> to make that a reality. Uh, how close are we to getting towards having that conversation for making that a reality? Yeah. Great question. Um, we are working right now with somebody in the private sector that um, has a very interesting model that we would like to pursue further. And so we chatted a little bit at, uh, at the um, Walmart. Um, yeah, Advanced Walmart too. Yeah, Thank you, Kimberly and Marsha and Joan are part of that um, discussion. And so there's there's some interesting things that are out there, and we've gotten some cost dollars, which cost numbers for kind of what that would cost to provide. And this would be part of the TFP is that 15 minute trip um, across town for people who don't have access to cars, or anybody, quite frankly, but I think that's where we started. Okay. And so there's some things out there that we're looking at. Um, they're not solidified by any, by any means at this point, but I think it provides, a, we actually see some light at the end of the tunnel, like the tunnel that's RTD that we feel like we, we can, there's a little light out there that maybe there's something beyond RTD that we can count on. And, you know, maybe groups like Transport up in Fort Collins, they're, they're running the flex bus service in the, in the Walmart too. I mean, it is a bunch of different partners that we share. Yeah. Well, I, I do believe that I read recently that RTD is starting to look at the concept of really just being a regional provider more so than having you know, municipal services. At least that's what I've read from various directors. Well, in a, in a regional meetings, RTD is saying, hey, we finally got our costs under control, which basically means we're not going to add an hour of service anywhere else in the district. We've got, we've got, we've got it right where we need it, and our revenue and, and expenditures balance. And so we know we're not going to get 
more service to a lot of more. Um, you know, we're, we're at where we're at, and we don't even get the regional services that we used to get. So there's, there's a couple things going on there that we are excited about. Try to change that discussion or that conversation. So at the end of the day, uh, I would like to see Vision Zero included in the TMP process. Because I'm, I'm generally a proponent of Vision Zero. So uh, I just want to uh, add to your conversation about the uh, intercity stuff. I had a conversation with Deborah Johnson, the CEO of uh, RTV, and asked her if we did get, we're interested in having our own local service in some fashion that we're working on it. And this is actually a conversation that has been happening in many cities in the RTD district to be able to take those uh, buses and put them regional uh, with the drivers and, and not use them for local. And what would be the possibility of the amount of dollars that RTD is putting into local, a percentage of those coming back to the city for us to be able to run our own <coughs> service. And um, it is in the discussions, it's being looked at as a partnership with RTD and probably the county as far as dollars, but it's just a discussion at this point. And I'm really excited about the fact that they're, they're realizing they can't do it all. And uh, even if they wanted to, they just can't. So those conversations are moving along. I think to the question earlier, when you look at, you can call this map up, to the, the Vision Zero communities, you can see how it's dominated on the east and west coast, and then in central US, there's not a lot of cities that are doing that. And I think that's part of it. And most of them in the central US are larger communities. Um, and the point of, I think, transit's a big piece of this. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a robust transit system, it's kind of hard. <clears throat> Something in, to give you a sense of what may, it, this is purely theoretical to go, what do we need to do? So a purely theoretical situation, we kind of got into it during COVID when we did the um, parklets, or the, mm -hmm. is that what we call the parklets? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we essentially took a lane down on Main Street and something that comes out of this may very well be a conversation of in order to increase pedestrian safety in this area we need to reduce the lanes from this street to this street to one lane each direction I mean that's very much driven by Vision Zero you know to reduce um, severe accidents, pedestrian accidents. That theoretically could be some of the hard decisions that come out of this and how we look at it and being committed to saying, yeah, we're moving on vision zero. Um, and I just throw that out because we all know what we got into when we did that. But if you talk about something doing it in perpetuity and you're committed to vision zero and these issues are there, that, that's some of the things that we're going to need from the elected officials as we're moving through the, some of these potentially paradigm shifts in how we look at transportation. Um, I have some remarks. Uh, Susie, you haven't said anything. Um, do, do you need to say things or? No. Okay. Um, so I noticed as we were going through this that um, a lot of the pieces, parts of what this plan would look like um, or that, that underpin the plan are things that have already been discussed, whether it is a new relationship with RTD, a new provider, um, the automation <laughs> that we're dipping our toe in there with. Um, I think it would be uh, a great thing to incorporate into the plan um, you know this inventory of we are already invested in this at this level and uh, you know kind of a, of a ramp to what we would need uh, for goals I think that would be a nice way of approaching at least part of it 
Um, but um, what I would really like to see, in, and you said it might take as much of as as a year to get this plan together. Um, but you also said, Phil, that um, there was um, one grant deadline that said, yeah, you need to have a Vision Zero resolution in place, and a second grant deadline for if you have a Vision Zero uh, resolution in place, what you ought to become eligible for. And if we could assume it's possible, put those things in our plan for a plan, as milestones so that we don't inadvertently miss something and then you can come back and say council we need you to find us some money so that we can get some more people to help us with this right at the beginning because if I learned one thing in the private sector it is it's really hard to add resources at the tail of a project so let's get those milestones and then I see Shakita going oh yeah um, let's get those milestones in there early so that we have uh, a really, uh, uh, you know, a really set date for when we're going to expect to see this plan and have time to pass a resolution because, you know, I'm for it. You know, I threw the gauntlet down at the, you know, at the time when everybody was for traffic safety because we had just lost a permanent resident. I don't think we've, people have forgotten that yet. But let's get it out there while people still have not forgotten it. And um, yeah, I'm I'm 100 percent for it. Sissy, councilman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I don't have any questions. Um, no, I appreciate the the introduction to um, to what this um, this is. I am supportive. Um, I'm looking forward. On. And I think I heard Council Member uh, Waters is for putting it in the PMP. Um, well, no doubt. I, okay. Here's my so having been called on, I'll make one more comment. Um, yes, and if I'm asked tomorrow, um, what does this mean for me as a resident? Uh, when will we have a robust transit system if that's a prerequisite for this? What does accountability look like? Who's accountable for what? My answer to every one of those questions is, is I don't know. So it would have, those are kind of questions we, before we have these sessions, would be good to anticipate. I understand this is looking for guidance, do we move forward? But there's a lot of I don't knows that I would have to say in response to questions. And yes, I'm supportive. I'd rather not be in a position to say I'm supportive. I'm certainly supportive of the concept of reducing traffic incidents, death and, and deaths, traffic deaths and, and collisions, right, accidents. Um, but, to, you know, <laughs> there's just so much that I don't, that I was like, I don't know about any of it, but conceptually, I'm, 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 I favor moving forward. But I wish we had more answers to questions that somebody should be asking us. We just threw down the gauntlet three weeks ago, right? No, so we talked about Vision Zero in February 2020 was the first time we talked about Vision Zero. Well, yeah, but then we said no. Well, we did. We said we were not ready to move forward. Uh, so, you know, between then and now, there are some <laughs> of these questions we could have anticipated and uh, have a better idea of what any of this is, what, what, the, what the expectations are for us. I hope, I hope there are some. If it's same old, same old, and there's no reason to think anybody's going to be any safer. As more than, you know, yeah, yeah. No, I think you go to the definition, and you know the definition is zero deaths, zero serious injuries, and so on and so forth. And, and so I think that's part of the you know I was looking at the, the some of the data that we have, and, 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 and you got to work off the data, right, to go what do we want to change? And so what we know is that um, Highway One Nineteen in Main Street, Seventeenth in Maine. Uh, 66 in Maine, uh, 119 in Pratt Parkway, Parkway, Hover in 119, Hover in Nelson, uh, 119 in Martin, Hover Basin in Hover. You can see where our, our problems are. And then you can see the fatalities associated with those areas. 
And when you're running off the data, it's like, so what do we want to change? We want to change what's happening at these intersections and reduce it. Uh, and, and, and that's kind of the next dive into this is to go, what are we changing? Here's what we're going to change. Here's what we're going to change about other things. And, and, and every area is going to present itself. And, and those are things before we bring a resolution to you all, we will have that lined up. I do think when we hook into a bigger plan, the state's vision zero, that we have more of a roadway into grant funding and uh, other forms of resources. I also agree with um, Martin that the resources are needed for them to really get going as well. Like they need to hire a consultant, they need to get um, all of the things that they need to get started with. Um, as well, so I think getting the transportation master plan though is the first step. Getting it in there, yes. Yeah. Well, we've also what would be, you know, <coughs> last year we asked for a transportation vision uh, zero item, and so those are the things you're going to see from the point of view as well as these requests for people to help us, the resources needed to help. And to be clear on this, I think part of it is, so here's the first change. If council says, yes, we're interested in this, and we go into the TMP, that's going to alter how we look at transportation because we're going to bring these concepts into the TMP and Vision Zero, which will impact funding. And, and how we look at budget issues. So it's, it's not a transportation management plan that we've had here for the last 30 years. It, it's going to be fundamentally different. And, and that's why I think for the public, using Vision Zero as the reason for some of these changes is a, is a better message to put out, that everything we're doing is for safety for Vision Zero. Do you think, uh, Jim and Phil, that if we had more pre-sessions a year on this topic alone to get started, would that be helpful for you to have this discussion? Because sometimes when it's just brought to council, it's more difficult to I think have we'll bring together the resolution. Yeah. We want to hear from you about what you want to see that before we take it up to City Council. Mm -hmm. And we want to hear from Tab. Thank right. you. Mm -hmm. we'll as happy. well. <laughs> take. Do you have your direction? Do you need anything more from us? That's not <laughs> Well, so, so here's what I'll say operationally. Based on where I see where council wants to go on this, we're going to start moving operationally um, to get um, the resolution ready, to start the work on the transportation master plan, to get you all the information you need. We will be looking at other things. So if there are projects that are in play that we know may not, be in alignment with Vision Zero, it's highly likely we may slide pull some of those back until we understand this. Okay. Um, and so there will, you know, I don't want to pull the trigger on a project that we know is probably not going to be in alignment with where we're heading with Vision Zero. So we're going to adjust a lot of things as we're moving in this, and I'm going to be adjusting staff work on some of these issues as well. Do you have an example or two here? If we were looking at a widening project, you know, we would go, does this widening project really take us to what we're looking at at Vision Zero, or is it something that's designed to look at flowing traffic through and not having congestion? I mean, that's a prime example of one where we'd go, what would this look like under the Vision Zero lens, and should we look at it in a different way? And if the answer to that is yes, then we're going to hold. So it's going to make us rethink a lot of things that have been 
on our capital improvement plans for a while that may not be in alignment with Vision Zero. And that may in turn free dollars up to then do some other things. Zach, how will this affect your department? Um, <clears throat> so Jim and I and the staff have already been working with Jeff. So some of the things along the slide, we're already working to implement. Um, so as far as from staff standpoint, um, you know, Jim, and I'll just take two seconds to cover. We're really looking in the direction of getting counsel the ideas of what red light cameras cost. Uh, identifying the top intersections that we're having those issues at because these things are stationary. You can't move them, they're not flying in. They stay in the intersection, that's where we're at. So understanding that, hey, this is this expensive product, it does have a link, but the goal for it is not to generate the same revenue as much as it is to change individual behaviors approaching those intersections. So uh, I think I can't remember somebody shared a story with this week, maybe you or someone else that. They're in a car approaching one of these cameras. Oh, that's my son, yeah. Yeah, your son. And so <laughs> so they, hit, they have them at four cars. Oh, yeah. Wow. And so immediately hit the brakes as the light is changing yellow instead of trying to beat it, mm -hmm. knowing that, oh, there's a light here. So you can see a change in behavior. Because most people are just stepping on the gas and trying to take Yeah, in two months, his behavior has changed in his driving. <laughs> oh. From driving in four cars where they have those uh, uh, red light cameras <laughs> to. Literally, it was at night, and he goes, you have to see it there. The flashes are going off constantly. And so his behavior changed dramatically. So again, identifying those intersections where we have many issues. The other part component of that is using something that only that's always aware of, but using Oculus, which is the cameras of the intersections, to, get, to be able to get real-time information when we have crashes and determine those things. Other things that we've done is we purchased a piece of equipment to scan scenes that we can do in a fraction of time that it took us a few months ago to do hours and have intersections locked down causing problems for traffic. And then the other piece again, uh, there's a sign that's on one of the screens that Jim and his staff have actually purchased. Um, we're paying the cloud software base, but as folks come in the city council that are getting complaints that their people are speeding and racing down the streets, this is a device that we put up in the neighborhood and we get real time information within three hours. So it to the cloud because it's the speeds, the average speeds. We'll break down the high speeds and low speeds will give us the hours, the times, the days that we're seeing increase in speeds so that we can use the resources that we have instead of sticking folks out here and go, okay, go sit out here for four hours and see what you see. We may have now able to take data over a period of time, share that with traffic, but we're also able to send enforcement out there at that period of time when we identify the violators, but the signs are portable. And so we're able to move those around the city as those complaints come in. That helps us be able to use, use our resources smarter, smarter instead of just throwing manpower at a problem that we don't know when it occurs, what, what the frequency of it is, time of day. And so a lot of the things that, that Jim talked about, uh, we're already working in partnership together to get those things in place and using technology already. So again, uh, again, there's a lot more to the plan, I understand that, but for what we're using, we're already working in partnering internally to, to develop those resources and share those resources and that data to address some of these issues in traffic. Great. And I think, you know, there, from a, what you all can do, there's some low hanging fruit that I think we need to focus on pretty quick. And it really is on the communication side. So, um, over the last six months, six to nine months, uh, if you go on North Main Street at night, I live up there, and I started noticing it across the community, the amount of people that are jaywalking. Oh, yes. and, and jaywalking in dark clothes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's something that is is a problem. And I've come yeah. close a couple of times. You just don't see them. Yeah. And you don't expect them there. Yeah. And I think that was one of the areas where we had a fatality or a serious injury adjacent to the Starbucks on Main Street. So those are some of the things that we yeah. need to put on the list and move it up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Because we don't need to wait on it because exactly. it, it, it's, get, it's getting bad in what we're seeing. So those are some of the things we'll bring as we're talking to you all. Especially on the unlit streets. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Neighborhoods. So have we ordered our little giveaway trinkets for the summer fairs? Because we could, we could order reflective tape to give away. If we're actually going to do that with uh, that traffic <coughs> safety fund that you approved with the council approved a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. This year we're going to buy it. No. We used to get those little blinky lights for the bikes. Yeah. And then we get some more reflective pieces that last forever. So they are things that have batteries that die. Uh -huh. So, 
Could you go to your second slide? As I'm thinking about what I just heard about red light cues, and um, uh, behavior modification, or not, where would where would the language about changing about behavior change? How does it how does that play into the vision zero side of this as opposed to the traditional approach? As far as Red light cameras themselves? Or the no, it's the language. Is it is is oh, vision yeah. zero and the cameras about trying to uh, do behavior modification? I thought I heard Jim say this is not behavior modification. This is a whole different approach. Uh, I think I said it's behavior modification. Yeah. It yeah. is behavior modification. Yeah, it is. Yes. I think I think the I mean what resonated with me is on the traditional approach is. Deaths are inevitable. It's based on perfect human behavior. Whereas this is, they are preventable, and you integrate human failing in an approach. And so when you look at the human failing, that's where the behavior modification comes in to, to minimize the human failing. So, and to that point, Lakewood is doing a very interesting thing where if you have jaywalking, there's a flashing light that can monitor, they can actually monitor the street. Because it's going to happen right, no matter what. You can, try to, you can put a crosswalk, a mid block crossing. I, mean, I saw somebody out here all day today crossing, you know, less than 50 feet from the, from the mid block crossing. But that's the piece where we're talking about integrating human failing in approach because people are going to do those behaviors and we have to get ready for them. So Lakewood has a, a flashing beacon that kind of goes on if there's somebody in the street to kind of you know, get ready for. Because you can actually monitor and then sense people in the street. So there's interesting things that are happening with some of that. Yeah, I mean, I lost my mind three nights ago. So we were going south on Main Street, and someone was walking across from where the Jester's uh, location is across the street. Literally, the crosswalks up here, and because of all the traffic, you couldn't see. And, and, and that it is behavior modification. And, that pivotal part of this. I'll tell you, my son's a key example. He was not, he was one that would push it on red lights. And it was amazing to see the difference. So, um, yeah, so I do have something to say. So, <laughs> um, so in Boulder, they have adopted Vision Zero. Um, I notice when I'm driving around, especially, you know, as a walker, you know, I go around, it's hard. And I can empathize why people might jaywalk when the intersections are so far apart. So it's just easier to jet across the street. I don't know this by experience, but um, <laughs> of course, <laughs> no, not me. no, no, no. Um, but I, you know, I can empathize. Uh, I do notice in Boulder they have a lot of crosswalks with the, the flashing lights, and you know that's something I'm all for flashing light things, you know, would we <laughs> be able to um, utilize those, especially along Main Street and some of our, our bigger areas where, you know, it's a greater distance between intersections. We're actually working with CDOT right now to awesome. install the first uh, flashing, or like <laughs> taking the flashing <laughs> on Main Street. We have, other, we have other ones around the city. Good, yeah, I know. First one on the state highway. We're currently looking at an uh, install probably early next year oh, good. on 17th Street. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Um, they are, the, the challenge right now is, is the, the, the product we use has about a three to six month order time okay. simply to get the materials in there. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, our staff is, we have worked on it. We have installed in the city. They've been successful. Mm -hmm. uh, we will continue to use them. Uh, the challenge on Main Street is that we have to really see that. Yeah. And, uh, we're right now. And, and I think that brings in the broader holistic mm -hmm. design conversation because um, 
Joni and I were talking about version one on nine. And us, us two, yes. where the signal is, and it can be a bit of a fiasco there too, mm -hmm. because people are driving and then it hits and somebody goes, and so it, that's not the end all be all no. either, because the broader design I think comes into play too. This yes. may get into the culture too, because yeah. when you go to other countries like Canada or right. Scandinavian countries, I mean, people are just taught to stop once they see anybody on the side of the road because or just slow down at least because the expectation is that person has the right to to go and cross and so here in the United States we you know we're all about the cars and we're gonna to get to that next tra traffic signal and that's what's gonna stop us is the hopefully the red light but anyway, not anybody on the side of the street so it's a cultural piece. yeah the culture's big even on a signalized intersection here in front of the building I think we've had Three people here? Yeah. Two or three that work for Two police and police. Oh. Okay. Yeah, at least two. And we had umpteen people almost hit. Mm -hmm. And it's on a walk signal. Yeah. And other countries also don't have a real a, a right turn on red. They don't allow right turn on red signals. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. I mean that's again a cultural thing. I don't know if Walmart's ready for that right now, but you know, I remember when I first moved here. A couple of decades ago, um, and our principal at the time had said, "Yeah, well, you know you're in Longmont when you know you get to that that light, and yellow means go faster, and red means three more cars go." And that was just kind of culture. that was the culture, and um, it hasn't changed. The four of us. It's good to know you're, you've are you been working on this. We're just putting a name to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so we could get, we to make some dummy red light cameras so that people wouldn't. It just flash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, is it? So, so based on this, we're going to have them work on the resolution. We're going to answer many of the questions that you all had as part of the backup for the resolution. And we're going to include that in the transportation management plan. We didn't want to go too deep based on we didn't know where the council was. We'll start moving and we're going to reprioritize it. I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn if you because we have our um, our sister cities people well, after we should probably be able to say hi So do I have a motion? I'll move to the second. Second. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right.